So if I go ahead and play that in my selected viewport, bam, it's doing a camera animation. When the camera gets to its final point, it starts playing the video. Okay, so all I've got here is a blank project with minimal default loaded up as the map. Can I save that to get rid of the star because I don't like it? I've also imported a MP4 file. Um, that's all I'm working with so far. So I'm basically started with scratch with this one. Okay, so I'm gonna grow ahead and I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to put this, I'm gonna zero this out, rotate it so that it is in the scene as sort of like a theater screen. Pop that up there. Scale that bad boy all the way out, just so it's visible, I guess. Compile and save. Add Control shift s to save all your assets is really useful. And that's going to be here. That's going to have nothing on it. So, we're going to create a new material. Map underscore media player. And that's going to be empty for now. We're going to drag that onto this. And that material is compiling itself. I'm going to create a media player. So I'm going to right click in the content browser, go media player. And it's going to prompt me to create a video output media texture asset. I'm going to go yes. I'm going to go text underscore media player. Just keep everything like consistently named, I guess, between each other. So we've now got four assets. We've got the media player, the material, the video file source itself, which I just import texture I'm gonna plug into my emissive um, you can set this up like a normal material with like roughness metallic all of that stuff so that's that's good to go and I'm going to open media player and I'm gonna double click that to get that loaded in I'm using this because it's loud it's 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 quick to the drawer um, it means we'll know if it's working now it's not as simple as that if we simulate that's not gonna play um, because we need a media player to dictate we need the media player in the scene somewhere to dictate it. And best way to do that I found is by creating a blueprint out of whatever screen you're running. Going add component, media, we want a media sound because that's gonna let us put the sound in and drop down here where it says media player, select M player polar, compile, save. Uh, we don't do that the same way for the actual media player itself. We create a reference variable. So create a new variable, click on the variable, Go to variable type and just start typing in M player, uh, media player, yes. Object reference. Compile this, save, rename the variable to media player, that'll make things easier. Compile it again. And your default value, change that to your media player. Compile, save. Now, this might seem like it's gonna work. It's not gonna work, because we haven't dictated anything that's gonna play through this yet. It's just an empty TV. So we wanna create another variable. Uh, we want to make this a reference to the media file itself. So file, file media source, that's a file media source reference. So I'm going to change that reference uh, variable name to media file. Compile, save, change that default to polar. That's the MP4 itself now referenced. Now we want to set this up in the event graph and begin. Oh no, we're already on begin play. What am I doing? We want to drag our media player into this, get media player, because we're going to want to reference this in our script. So drag out from the media player pin, set so uh, source, open source. Okay. Drag that. First thing it's going to do is it's going to grab polo.mp4 as its media source. And then we're going to want to go play. Uh, could, we just, could we just get a simple... A simple play, please. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to drag out from media player. And I'm going to go play. Because that's going to get us there quicker. Tick. Compile. Save. Now, if we simulate, there we go. We got a media player with sound. But that's not all we want to do. We don't just want this to automatically play. We want this to be buzzed on by an event. Um, so let's go to our blueprint again. Um, delete this begin play node and go custom event to start typing custom event play that shit is going to be our custom event drag that in here compile save and I also want to tick colon editor so I can check this from the editor without um, getting too far into it and realizing the event isn't actually working so I'm going to simulate I'm going to click him 
and I'm going to scroll down in my uh, details panel to default. I'm going to click play that shit, and it's going to stop playing the file. Cool. What you could do as well, uh, if you want to get more complicated with it, you could create an empty material mat no play and save that. And that's just going to be like a dark material, default material, and select this default. Uh, go to your uh, plane, set your default to no play in your materials panel. Yep, compile. That's just check aborting because the material isn't compiled yet. Okay. Now, and and as part of our event graph, when play that shit plays, we want to set material. Oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Set material of stat static mesh component, which is going to automatically inject a reference to your static mesh component from up here, down here, and we want that material to go to mat underscore media player. Cool. And just set that. So by default, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a constant just so it's not. I'm gonna make this 0.5 just so it's got something to reference and it's not trying to compile from nothing. Okay, so that's going to be mat no play. So if we go alt s, it's not going to just show the first frame of the media player anymore. But if we hit play that shit, it changes the material. Okay, now how do we reference this from a, uh, a flyover or a sequence? Um, I'm going to create a new asset. Obviously, you're going to want to organize these files better than I am right now. But you're going to go to the animation advanced asset and you're going to scroll down to level sequence. Sec theater play. Okay, I'm going to double click this. This is going to open up the sequence panel. Now I'm going to, I don't like working with it down here, but for the sake of video recording, this is where it's going to go. I'm going to add a new track to the sequencer, actor to sequencer, add plane that's called blueprint, which is what this blueprint's called. Okay, I'm going to delete the transform section because we don't want to keyframe that accidentally and ruin everything. I'm going to click this track here. I'm going to go to event. I'm going to go to trigger. I'm going to add a trigger track. Okay, so let's say 30 frames in to the animation, um, we're going to trigger an event. We double click the keyframe. This brings up an event graph. Drag out from plain blueprint, event, play, uh, play that shit. And that's going to call the event on this. So if we scroll all the way back here, we hit space. Oh wait, it's not, you have to be simulating for this to work. So scroll back here, hit space, bam. When it hits that point in the keyframe, it starts playing the media source. But that's not all we wanna do. We also wanna create a flyover. I'm gonna drag this all the way to like 75 frames. Um, you can set the sequence length here under the playback, start zero. So I can set this end as like, I'm going to set this to 500 and just give us a good bit of buffer room. And then when it gets to 180, it'll start playing. You can save from here or you can control shift S. We want to create a new new camera and set it as the new camera cut with this convenient camera button. So click that. That's created a new camera for us. And we can go into perspective and choose to be the camera. Or we can click, uh, we can click this eject button here to stop piloting it and we can control it from the world like this. I personally like to do this more often than not because it's like animating a character, animating a joint. Um, I'm gonna do something cool here where it's gonna start looking to the sky. Save this. And we're gonna basically drag this down so that it rotates and looks at the screen as the media comes on. So I'm gonna add a new keyframe for the transform at zero. I'm gonna go to the zero frame, add a new key. Cool. Um, I'm going to get rid of current aperture, current focal le length, manual focus distance. You can basically control every single like element of the camera itself, whether it's um, the aperture or whether it's... Oh, wait. I didn't mean to... <laughs> didn't mean to get rid of that. Um, you don't have to get rid of those. I'm just doing it because I like a cleaner workspace and I'm giving myself very little screen real estate to work with down here. Um, you can control every single aspect from this detailed panel down here in the... Uh, sequencer. So you can do that by going track, um, camera animation, camera shake, assets. Um, there are more things. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, from the camera component, you add a track. And that gives you things like auto-activate, aspect ratio, aperture, focal length, all, all of that stuff. Film back presets. Whatever you want, you can keyframe that. Which is incredible. This is basically like working in After Effects. Um, so, we want to get our camera looking at the screen by 180. So, I'm going to move my playhead there. Change the transform here to 90 degrees, so it's looking at a straight angle. Pull this down here. And add a transform keyframe. Bam. Now, if we run that back, you can see the camera moves in a little camera preview. You can see that it goes to that. Um, apparently, at some point, I it S curves the uh, <laughs> the rotation. But that actually brings me into my next point. You can click this, show the animation keys in a curve editor, and this actually brings up a little a little uh, little sequence graph, a little curve editor, just like in Maya. And if you drag extend this window, you get all of these lovely options. I'm going to set my keys to linear right now, just to clean them up. And then I'm going to drag over them all again. And I'm going to... There is an ease. There is an ease preset. You can go automatic. That works too. Um, but for rotation, I'm actually going to set that to... Uh... Actually, I really just don't want any rotation on the x-axis. Ah, oh, that's right, he uses bloody pitch your... Which one is that? That is... Not on here, apparently. Anyway, forget that. It, it, this, this is beside the point. You'll, you'll, you'll know what to do with your own animation skill set in this regard. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my content browser. I'm going to put this sequence physically in the scene right here. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go autoplay. I'm going to go loop, loop indefinitely, and it's going to loop for me. So if I go ahead and play that in my selected viewport, bam, it's doing a camera animation. When the camera gets to its final point, starts playing the video.